So we had a thesis whereby I argued that higher education cannot escape, escape today the age of uh, um, electronics because library can, the libraries cannot sustain the old tradition anymore. Uh, the production of knowledge requires the distance connections between scholars and most importantly teaching. We cannot pay the cost of teaching anymore and then given the numbers of people who want to attain higher education and teacher education and hence the idea of the virtual teacher training, the virtual university is inescapable. Then came the thesis, the antithesis where I tried to show the human side with four or five points claiming that you cannot fully rely on distance learning, certainly not for teacher training. But that brings me in a good Marxian way to the synthesis. And here I want to make a few points. We cannot escape distance learning and we cannot just go back with a little bit of nostalgia to the good old days of face to face. You know, even nostalgia today isn't what it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> and we're talking about differentiation. And differentiation, let me give you the brief metaphor, which I like. It is true that all of us would like to eat out only in good, excellent French restaurants. But it's not really possible all the time. You do need to have McDonald's as well. And there is room for both. And if you're in a hurry and you don't have that much money, you go to a McDonald's. You want a romantic dinner, you have time and you have money and a partner for a romantic dinner, you go to a French restaurant. You have the choice. There is a differentiation. Not every French restaurant should become a McDonald's. So it could be a differentiation between different kinds of institutions. One, had, one would have choice to go and study on the campus, dedicate him or herself to the studies there, or alternatively find his or her way through distance learning. I can see the differentiation doing this, that you have universities do what they do best, face-to-face, -face, intensive discussions and deliberations. Whereas other institutions would offer an alternative distance learning. I can see differentiation between academic levels within institutions. There are introductory courses based mainly on, on the large loads of information which could be taught through distance <coughs> learning. Advanced seminars where a lot of thinking has to go in, where creativity is to be cultivated, where skill, meta-knowledge and dispositions are to be cultivated, they are possibly face to face will not do great wonders. Indeed, more distance learning where master of basic information is the main goal and more face to face where depth and creativity are expected. The second point is integration and that is our greatest challenge. The differentiation thing is easy. There is an open university in England and whoever doesn't want to go to Oxford can go to the Open University. I'll be honest with you. We have an Open University in Israel as well. I mean, quite a number of countries have it. The percentage of people who graduate with a degree from distance learning institutions is... It's a lottery. <laughs> for Cronin, for those who guess correctly. What's the percentage, in your opinion? Seven. Okay, never mind. Five? You're close, very close. Yeah, you. 
between 4 and 5 percent. <coughs> integration is a real challenge. How do we integrate the two such that we have the best of what face-to-face -face has to offer together with the very best that distance learning can offer. Yesterday I used the expression, we are building the boat while sailing it. <coughs> this applies here as well. There are no perfect models around. There are no beautiful cases we can copy. Each place, each country, each system has to struggle through and develop its own model the idea of some integration that really makes the best of a wonderful cordon bleu as well as a pizza. <coughs> we talk about integration within courses, within educational systems, and that's very difficult. Anyone of you has tried to integrate some components of virtual teaching into a face-to-face -face course, or vice versa, has seen how difficult it is, how challenging it is, but when it succeeds, it is indeed a great success. That brings me, being an old man, uh, and therefore I can allow myself some advice which I probably, being a young person, would have never listened to. First one is avoid trivialization. We talked about it yesterday. Nothing easier than trivialize everything. And if you think that uh, if you could teach a course face to face, why not put it on the web? And that's to trivialize the course, because the course face to face had so many other components that uh, the distance learning, cannot easily have. I say easily. Maybe we can build it in, but that's not a trivial challenge. That is exceedingly complicated and demanding. How do we build the personal contact into virtual teaching and thus not trivializing the process of teaching? Um, we should be able to use technology where and when it's fully appropriate. Good question. When is it really appropriate? It's not easily answered. But it's something to sit and think about. It's not a ready-made answer. <coughs> that is a point I'd like to stress. Think where you are going before you are going there. Okay, now we know what it can be, it being virtual teaching, distance learning. Let's stop and think for a minute. Where do we want to go with it? It's not exactly... I have a metaphor, but I'm careful with it, so never mind. It's a wonderful metaphor. There are certain processes which you begin, you don't know where they end, and then you discover pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> I will not go into this matter. <laughs> the question is, where do we want to go? What is our image of higher education, or in this case, of teacher training? They're sort of the ultimate end state where we say yes. That is where we would get, want to be. And now we are gradually going in that direction. What is the vision <coughs> we are striving for? In my own country, I'm fighting higher education exactly for the same reason I say, nothing against distance learning, but stop. Before you begin to invest time, money, effort, excitement, think where you want to go. And if you come to the conclusion that that's where you want to go, then let's go there. But let's not have, first we do it, then we, you remember Shakespeare? Decide in haste, repent in leisure. So we we'll make a decision very fast, then we'll have enough, sufficient number of years to regret it. <laughs> and last, 
The famous words of Seymour Saracen, one of the wisest people I know, an old, by now old, psychologist. He's the one who wrote the book, The Culture of School, then laid the foundations for the community psychology, etc. And he said something which I think should be a motto, a guide, a compass for all of us. Not everything possible is necessarily also desirable. The fact that certain, certain <coughs> things are possible and they look wonderful doesn't mean that they are desirable. Which in fact should make us, us, the people who shape education, <coughs> stop and do some thinking. Thank you very much. Thank you.